What's up everyone, Chris from Full Steam Designs. Today I'm going to show you how I built this enclosure for my Otor laser. It features an interchangeable bed system that uses different style wasteboards, this metal grid, and is deep enough to use the cup roller. I'll also be adding an air assist and fume extraction. I have a set of plans available for this that will be shown throughout the video, so make sure you check those out if you want to build your own. We have a lot to cover, so let's get to it. I designed this project to be made from a single sheet of half inch MDF. I start by breaking down the larger sheet into smaller sections so I can cut them all down to the final size of my table saw. Here's a picture of the cut list. If you break the full sheet down into 24 and a half, 25, and 26 and 5 eighth inch pieces, it will be a lot easier to manage. Then you can just cut off the individual pieces. Some of these have angles on them so it's a good idea to cut them a little oversized. Don't get too hung up on the exact measurements. Just trim the pieces to fit together as you go. I like to write the measurements on each piece to keep them organized. I also printed out all of my plans and taped them to this board so I can reference them as I go. I'm cutting dados in some of the panels to help with assembly. If you don't have a way to do this, you can just subtract a quarter inch from the pieces that fit into the dados, but I really think that this helps with assembly and makes everything stronger. You probably noticed that I make a few mistakes throughout this build. Hopefully you can learn from them. I needed to make this middle dado just a hair wider, so I moved my fence and ran all of the pieces through again. The back panel calls for a dado that stops short on each end, and I wasn't paying attention and accidentally flipped the board. I ended up with a dado that was over one inch wide. No big deal though, it will be in the back and will still work. I cleaned up the rounded corners using a chisel. I wanted to have the top of the enclosure taper towards the front a little bit. This is mostly just for aesthetics, and you could make it flat if you prefer. It certainly would have been a lot easier to do it that way. I used this homemade jig that uses these dovetail clamps to hold my boards and cut the tapers. This is a really handy setup. As always, I'll put links in the description to everything I used in the video. The measurements for the angled cuts are a little arbitrary. The easiest way to set this angle is to use the piece that we just cut as a reference. Just tilt your blade until it matches and you're good to go. These are the panels that you will want to leave a little long. I ended up cutting one a little too short and remade it from some of the leftover MDF. I made sure to update the plans along the way. Computer generated plans are great, but they don't always work perfectly in the real world. Next I needed to cut out the opening in the front panel for the controller. I used a Forstner bit to cut the holes in the corners so they would be rounded, and connected them with the jigsaw. I try to set up straight edges to use as guides whenever I can. It takes a little extra time, but the cut is usually much better. I laid out the opening for the window and again used Forstner bits to cut the holes in the corners. This time I used the table saw to plunge up through the material. Just make sure you don't cut too far into the corner. I finished the cuts off with a pull saw. I used a mini spindle sander to clean everything up and then cut out the recesses for the windows with a half inch rabbiting bit on my palm router. The original plan was to put this on the bottom of the panel, but I thought it would be a nice touch to put it on top and then add some trim to hold it in place. You can definitely simplify this design a lot if you just want to make a simple enclosure. I wanted something that not only worked well, but looked cool since I plan on having this around for a while. Finally, I'm at the point where I can start assembling everything. The more time you spend in the previous steps, the easier this will be. I also like to test fit stuff along the way. There's nothing worse than having to fight with a piece that doesn't fit right in the middle of a glue up. I used pocket holes to help assemble the two shelves that go in the bottom half of the enclosure. 
These tend to shift around a little when tightening them, so I use a clamp to hold the joints flat. When assembled, these should be the same size as the bottom panel. I chose to only partially assemble the bottom until I could get a few coats of shellac on everything. Not only will this help to strengthen the MDF and make it easier to paint, it will also help seal it from the fumes created by the laser. Fibrous materials like MDF will absorb these fumes that not only smell bad, but can potentially be toxic. A coat of paint will help seal it even better. I decided to go with white on the inside and gray on the outside. I'd love to hear what colors you plan to use if you make one. Off camera, I did a quick test fit, and it was at this point that I noticed another small problem. The opening for the controller needed to be about a half inch to the right. I made a few cuts to fix this mistake, and once again updated the plans. Now I can finish painting and get everything assembled. The shelves had a slight sag in the front, so I attached a couple pieces of wood to the door to help support them. There's a lot of ways to attach the door. You can hinge it on one of the sides or the bottom. I chose to use these hasps so I can completely remove it. My camera went a little crazy for that part, but the install is pretty straightforward. I chose to have my top hinge in the back. If you prefer, you could make it completely removable like the door. I secured the laser to the top shelf using the supplied angle brackets. To keep the lid from opening too far, I installed this lid support. They come with directions, but I guess I was looking at stuff upside down because I started putting the holes in the wrong spot. They sell these for the left and right side of a box, and luckily I bought both because the first one I tried to install was for the wrong side. I ended up replacing these screws with nuts and bolts because they started pulling out of the MDF. I also added a couple little alignment blocks to help keep the lid square. For the screen, I'm using this piece of orange acrylic. I'm not convinced this is the right stuff for use with a laser. A lot of the reviewers said that that's what they were using it for, but it wasn't stamped with anything saying that it was approved for use with lasers. Do your homework and make sure you get the right stuff. If in doubt, wear your tinted safety glasses. I wanted the laser to be able to go a little lower, so I designed a new bracket and 3D printed it. Eventually I'd like to get one of the thumb screw height adjusters. I'm not sure if I'll just buy the one or tour sells, or make one of my own. This new bracket works great for now. I went back and forth on the location of the fume extractor and settled on the side of the top. The fan isn't super powerful, but it seems like it's more than enough to get the fumes out of the enclosure. If you buy the same one, just be aware that you will have to put a plug on the end. Now that I had everything assembled and working, I decided to cut out a layout grid in my MDF bed. This will help line up projects and make sure they're square to the machine. I just laid out a series of squares from 15 to 1 inch. I'll probably add a fence too, at least along the Y axis to help line stuff up. There's a ton of options for jigs that you can make to speed up production. Let me know in the comments section if you'd like to see a video on this. I was excited to see if there was any difference in doing through cuts with the air assist, so I swapped out my bed for the metal grid. I use an oven pan below it to catch anything that falls through the grid. The other great thing about this is that it's magnetic. You can see how this piece of cardboard doesn't want to lay flat, but these magnets hold everything down great. They even work with thicker materials like plywood. I put a piece of 5mm thick plywood to do the real test. I used to have to make 5 passes at 10 inches per minute with 80% power. The air assist consists of a 3D printed nozzle and an air pump for a fish tank. With this new setup, I was able to cut through this same plywood with only three passes. It did have a couple little pieces that didn't get completely cut through, so I slowed it from 10 to 8 inches per minute. This is a great upgrade. It will prolong the life of the laser and speed up my workflow quite a bit. I haven't gotten around to using my cup roller yet, but here's a few clips showing how well it fits. I'd like to add a switch panel for the fan and air pump. 
I'll get all of this cleaned up a little bit when I figure out where its final spot will be in my shop. It definitely can't stay on top of my CNC. Thanks for checking the video out. Here's all of the plans that I came up with for this build, with the necessary corrections made. I recommend taking a screenshot and printing them out. If you build one of these, I'd love to see it. You can tag me on Instagram at full underscore steam underscore designs. If you found this helpful, I'd really appreciate if you clicked that like button, shared the video, and left a comment below. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to the channel. I have a lot of other videos on lasers, CNC routers, woodworking, and making stuff in general. Until next time, I'll see everyone over on one of these other videos.